I'd like to talk to you a little bit, ladies and gentlemen. A lot of the things that happened from, uh, from my side of the story, uh, there's been a lot written and a lot said about what happened to me, but uh, never from my side. Hi guys, and welcome back to a new episode of Let's Talk Elvis. Today, oh, we'll get into it, we'll get into it, because I am joined with a very, very special guest and very close friend, Maria. Maria, how are we? Hello, I'm fabulous and so ready to go. How are you? I'm good. We've we've been playing this for a while. I think I say that with every guest, but it's true. Like you're always talking and then you finally get around to it. And I know you've got some good stuff to talk about today and I'm very excited. If it's Elvis related, it's always good. So it's always Elvis. <gasps> <gasps> wow. Stop. wow. Stop starting it off with a bang because we were just talking about Elvis references. First of all, okay, Maria is the queen of the Elvis pun. And I feel like I should say that just to start the conversation going. Um, if you're ever in conversation with Maria, she'll make at least five Elvis references in the conversation that we're having. <laughs> you know? Yes. So, I apologize, but also subtly you're welcome because it's... <laughs> <laughs> no, I love it. I love it. <sighs> it is the best. And so if you guys can count, if it happens, we said like watch us make none. But if it does happen and we end up making some... <laughs> Then comment how many you count because Maria is, again, the queen of it. She is. Honestly, if you don't pick up on it either, I might just keep going or I might point it out. So true. Depending how it goes. Right. It's always embarrassing though when I don't pick up on it because it's like, girl, it's the most like, what's the word? It's the most like obvious one. And I'm like, oh, that one. That one. Okay. But if you don't pick up on the obvious ones, that could be a sign that you're digging so deep into the weeds of Elvis content that you <laughs> just say sometimes right. it's the most basic thing. Like I still that's count true. my fingers and I forget how to count sometimes. True. Accountant <laughs> so, vibes. And she, no, that's, va that's facts. That's facts. Thank you for validating me for that. Oh, it's, it that. happens. It happens. I um, I love that. So no, if you can, if you can count, if you can count, girl, everybody here can count. Um, <laughs> but if you want to count how many times Maria uh, drops an Elvis pun, then that'll be a fun game during this episode. Yes. Um, yeah. We love it. Yes. Uh, so the whole purpose of like this series is connection and Elvis connected me to Maria literally last year. I feel like I've known you for longer than that, but it was, we met last year, Elvis week. Um, and that's crazy because I feel like I've known you forever. I feel like I've known ah, you forever. Okay, I'm definitely Stop. gonna be announcing it as you say it. <laughs> no, <laughs> please do, please do. No, yes, okay. we need to like announce it when we give. Yes, when we give. Okay. Yes. 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 I feel like I've known you forever. Honestly, we were having a conversation about this like a month or two ago. I was like, it was really just Elvis week. That was, I know, less than a year. Like we knew of each other. We talked a little bit, but. Elvis week right. was like lighting the fire of Moment. the friendship, the eternal flame of the friendship. <clears throat> right. Um, <laughs> no, it's so true. And like, I've been a fan of your, because Maria has a killer Instagram page. You guys already know this. Um, it's always Elvis. She eats it up with her content. And again, another, she's the queen of multiple things. It's the Elvis pun, but it's also... Just like she knows so much about the music world of Elvis. And while I appreciate the, I love, I adore Elvis music. It's my favorite music to listen to. Um, I will say that I'm not as schooled as some other people. And like when it comes to shows and dates and like performances and things like that. And she just is like, you could ask her anything and she would know the exact like, I've, I've, I've literally seen you like listen to an audio clip that, Everyone's like, okay, love this version. And you're like, this day, this time, this night, this uh, venue. And it's crazy. So, like, I just have always admired that. And I was so excited to meet you in person last year. And look at where we are now. Look at it. Oh, I, oh my gosh. <laughs> Remind me to add that to my bill of what you, what I owe you after um, this sure, event. Sure, sure. Oh, no. my gosh. No, okay. no. Well, that's the cool thing about this community is like we all have our own little twist and yes. like niche of the Elvis world. Like absolutely, as you said, music is my vibe. For you, I'm like straight fifties. Like Mary knows everything about the fifties. Like Elvis's upbringing, yeah. your fifties vibe. 
Thank you. If I ask you anything wild in the country, I know that you're going to be oh, like gotcha off covered. the rails. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> That's true. That and true. your content always comes from the heart. I'm like, Mary just sat down one day and she was like, I'm just going to write all this amazing stuff. And it just comes out like so poetic, just so, I don't know if professional is the right word. We're Thank not professionals you. on Instagram. <laughs> no, no, we're not. We try. We try. Yeah. But I would say the same for you. Like, I don't know. It, it is like, I don't know. In so many conversations me, me and Maria have, we go down the rabbit hole and I can feel it coming. Like, it's already feel, started. Now. Right. Like I can feel it literally <laughs> starting now. And then yeah. what are we like five minutes in? Yes. Um, no, but like, I feel like it's such a breath of fresh air and so comforting. And it sticks out to me every time where I find somebody in the community that just does everything with like, you're talking about like with a passionate heart and just like love and dedication. Yeah. Um, and I feel like that vibe I always got from you. And that's like something that attracts me to you as attracts me to you, girl, attracts me to your page, attracts me to your personality, you as a friend, we love it. Love so it. yeah, I think we've had this conversation before, but just like the way that you carry yourself in the community, like I just, I wanted to have you on the episodes that I do here because I do truly admire you and what you do and your heart for our guy. And um, yeah, I think that you're just like a stand up person. So I love it. Oh my it. gosh. This is going to be the lamest response ever, but like, ditto all of that right there. <laughs> like, Push your, it back. your account was probably one of the first ones I followed, like, before I even made my account. Yeah. Because you had yours before mine. And did I? Oh, yeah. yeah. We need to talk about this too. Mm hmm. We talk about so, this. you were, a, when did you start yours? 2019. Okay. And when did you start? 2000... 2020. 2020. Okay. So, like, a yes. year after me. Oh my gosh, was 2020 or 2021? It was 2020, yes. The year of the plague? Yes. 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 Okay, it was okay. But okay. We we're obviously always fans before that. We just yes. decided to make it an Instagram yeah. hobby, community, whatever you want to call it. Right. And that's crazy. It's so crazy. And I wanted to ask you too, like, one of my first questions that I have was like, what connected... Like, I want to know, like, from the beginning, like, when did you become a fan? And then, like, what made you want to turn that into, like, a public, like, social media thing where you share that with other people? Like, what inspired that for you? Yes, I love this question because I had a similar one for you. A little bit of a different twist, but. Okay, okay. I'm ready. Yeah, don't worry. Um, okay. So, honestly, this is going to sound, I feel like every fan, but they're like, I don't remember a time in my life when I didn't have all this. This is honest because the first time I ever went, I was eight months old. I have a no picture. Way. Yes, I have a picture in the little souvenir plaque that you get. Like when you yes. go yes. to the house and get on the shuttle, they take your picture. So I have wanted my entire family. I'm eight months old. So I'm like, okay, first of all, magic eight, circle that. Ah! For all this happening. Oh my word. I just thought of that when you said that. Yeah. So eight oh months old. Gosh. And then. The bug just dropped from there. So that's my first non-memorable awesome. thing that happened. I don't remember it because you're- eight. Right. So you don't but, remember your first trip. That's so crazy. No, I don't. Oh my word. But the things I do remember is every summer, my family would take a two week road trip. Like uh -huh. out West, we would drive all across the country. Like we drive to California, Wyoming, everywhere we drove. I love that. So the top- three or four CDs that I would always remember that were Elvis related. Afternoon in the Garden, Aloha from Hawaii, Elvis Country, uh -huh. Elvis in Concert, the 77 CBS special. Ah, uh, so good, so good. When you have those four, like that's all you need to get hooked. You're set. No, literally, you're you're set for that road trip. Yes. So oh my like, gosh. hearing those on repeat, everybody would get sick of me in the car because I'm like, oh can we like play Elvis again, play Elvis again? They're like, no. Yeah. <laughs> we heard it six times, Maria. Oh my gosh. Oh, you put it away. Right. Yes. Take a nap. <laughs> yeah. So that really kicked it. Like the music is what drew me in, and that's yeah. still what keeps me as a fan. Oh, it's just, here. yeah. That's so like cool. the music has started everything. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That's so cool. That's mm -hmm. so special that you were that young and you can remember that. That's awesome. Thank you. Okay, so I, I have a follow-up question for you now. Yes, yes. So already. what aspect of Elvis drew you in? Because some people, it's the music. Some people, it's his story and just how he came from 
basically nothing and growing yeah. up to being literally one of the most famous people in the world. Yeah. Or it's his looks, his overall vibe. Like, what was it for you that drew you in and kept you sticking around? I love that question. I think it it was one thing and then it switched for me. Like, like you, I grew up like with my mom who loved, adored Elvis, like from the time that she was very young. Um, so she would always be playing the music and like playing the movies in the house and everything. And I remember like always knowing who he was, but then when I was four years old, my mom got the DVD King Creole from my dad for Mother's Day. Wow. And she put it in and I sat with her and I watched it. And I just remember like there was something about him where I was like, oh, he is my friend. Like, I don't know how to describe it, but it was like, I know this guy. Like, I feel like, and I was only like a little kid, but I was like, this guy and I are, are, are buddies, you know? For life. Like, right. Like, you know, when you like watch a TV show or a movie or something, like, when you're a little kid, but it could also be now, like, I, I have a connection to like characters that I read about in books or see in movies or whatever, like portrayals of people or fictional people. Yeah. And I think that's what it was. And then I went to Graceland Lake for the first time when I was, I think, nine or 10. And I just got like immersed in the world of this person um, that I kind of liked a lot when I was growing up and like became connected to. But then when I was 18, I went for um, my graduation trip again back to Graceland. I think it was like my fourth trip. And it wasn't until then where I was like, oh, he's not just like a character though. Like he's not just... Superman. Yeah, he's not like made up. Like he actually lived and he was real. Like Yeah. And I don't know why it just clicked when I was that age, like but it did. And then that's kind of spiraled into me learning more about like his life and like who he was as a person and like realizing that that character that I loved and felt connected to growing up was actually like a real guy who knew other people and like had a kid and had a wife and like yeah down the rabbit hole as we as we say wow yeah see that right there just proves like everyone is drawn to elvis in a different way so like you yeah. remember King Creole, the movie just being plopped in and you're like who, yeah um excuse me who is this guy <laughs> yeah yeah literally yeah wow and you have you have the voice which is so on brand for you like i that could have been a more like perfect story because that's your whole that's what you do like that's what your passion is when it comes to, like the elvis world or at least one of them True. I love that. And to your point too, like you learn about one aspect of it and that just makes you want to learn the rest because yep. every part that you study about him is just a piece of the whole puzzle. Whether you're looking yes. at Elvis the entertainer, Elvis the human being, it's it all comes together to be Elvis Presley. You can't yeah. just learn one without learning the other because you're not the other. Understand all of it. So you have to oh, absolutely. dive in, learn everything that you can. Yeah. Like we've been fans for so long. We've both studied so much on him just because mm -hmm. it's so interesting. And there is, it seems endless with things you can learn about him. For mm -hmm. someone who was on this earth for only 42, only 42 years, years. Yep. there's still stuff that we don't know, still stuff to be discovered, new audio, like mm -hmm. books, stories. There's so much. There really is. Years, like, it's, it's really true. hard to comprehend. It's, it's so true. And I always say too, like, it, like, it's so hard at the same, like, there's so much, but then imagine all the stuff we don't know as well. Like, cause 42 years, how can you put that into like a book or a movie or whatever it is like a portrayal of him in a, in a movie or a book written by somebody who knew him? Like 42 years is a long time. And like, it's a lot of life, but also such a short life. But yeah. like, imagine I don't think I'll ever stop learning is like what I'm getting at. Like right. every day is I learn from other people. I learn from people like you and other people in the community. I'm so lucky and grateful to, to have everybody there. Cause I, I do learn from everybody every day and it's never ending. Like one thing leads to another leads to another. And like those puzzle pieces do get put together. Never ending. <clears throat> right. <laughs> Right, right. But no, In that's fact. so true. And again, with all of us studying a different aspect of him, like there's no way one person can learn all of that. So we need each other to like, yes, pick your passion about him, share it with everyone. And that's what all of our accounts are about. Like, yes, 
again, here comes another Elvis reference, but during his press conference for Madison Square Garden, he's like, I think there's room for everybody and I really can't criticize another it's performer. It's like, that's like all of us. We all pick a different yeah. aspect of him. There's room for everybody because we need everybody. And we do. that's what it's about. Is facts. It's true. And sometimes it's hard to remember that because yeah. I don't know, for me, a lot or like often I'll see content that I'm just like, oh, like, I don't personally want to be seeing this or like, I don't need to be whatever, like, and not saying it's about anybody, but it's so f true. Like they're just what I think is interesting might not be for everybody. And I made a post a while, a while ago, it was a couple of years ago, I think, but it's like, if some people just like the movies, like there are some fans out there who just like the movies, but like, that's their thing. Or there's people who just like the, 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 the music. And that's my mom. Like my mom doesn't want to hear the stories from the girlfriends and like she doesn't want to get into it she does not want to know she just knows the elvis that is her elvis sure. and that's like the singer that she grew up with and not saying that she doesn't care but she's right. not interested in all of that she just wants her elvis you know what i mean mm -hmm. and so it's it speaks to that too like there are people who just are interested in different things and Elvis is for everybody he wants to be for everybody so if people are just interested in whatever they're interested in let them have that let him be for everybody in whatever way he can be something for everybody true nah let me grab that album really fast <laughs> I love that no it might just be back, back yeah uh, let you grab that album girl look at that look at that Excuse me. No. <laughs> oh my gosh we should talk about um the queen of the ftd world mm. and that is you um oh my god what how did you even like how did you because I, well i know you were talking about like the road tripping and like mm -hmm. what was the thing that you said the afternoon in the garden or something cd yeah afternoon is... in the garden which by the way my copy of that is so horrendous because i've listened to it like i literally scotch taped the front stop do i dare show you <laughs> no please please oh, do like, Oh my gosh. Okay, this it's... is subtly embarrassing, but like, do you oh see the God. amount of scotch tape that is on here? Oh my gosh, stop This it. is straight about to fall off, but in no way, shape, or form, like... You will never get rid of that. That was your no. gateway. This... Honest, that is your gateway. Yes. Like, the amount of scratches that are on the back of this, scuff marks... Oh my gosh. Those are battle scars from the car CD player. <laughs> from the but... car CD player. That's just how many Stop. memories are made on this little thing. Like there has to be at least 20 pages or 20 <coughs> pieces of scotch tape. Oh my gosh. Yeah. You took care of it though. You loved it. You didn't just like, you know, chuck it when it got old. TCB on all of this. So. I love that. Wait, so like, okay. So when did you like start like experimenting outside of the, because that right there is not like a studio album. That's like Correct. a dare i say see i don't know is it a boot would it be considered a bootleg no so no this, tell me i'm ready this one is where i get a little wonky so okay we had a conversation about this too in terms of like yes what makes something a bootleg what makes something an ftd yes it not available on streaming that whole situation mm -hmm, mm -hmm. my understanding at this point if i say something wrong please somebody tell me, but this has yes, been my, yes, this has been my overall understanding of how it works. Right. So I'm ready. anything that was released during Elvis's lifetime as like an official RCA album. So as Mary and I are talking, like, that's the way it is. That album that came out, something for everybody that came out, like the movie soundtracks, those came out when Elvis was alive. Right. So you can find those on Spotify. Right. Right. Those are available because they've been officially released. And that's how you can know. There are some caveats to that, but general understanding, that is the, like, the, the basic RCA material. Yes. Got it. Okay. Okay. So, Afternoon in the Garden, I believe was on the, um, the album, like the black one. Just, it's behind me. I should just Do it. it. Do it. Yes. Okay. That, I have that album. Yes. So, this was, like, officially released when he was alive. Yes. Because they made it into an album. Yes. So this is on spotify <laughs> right right so even though it is an ftd ftd goes beyond anything that would have been released when he was alive or like officially released as an rca album so like out outtakes and things like that 
Yes. So outtakes, not a part of the original stuff. Right. Live performances that were either audio record or audio audience recorded Mm -hmm. or just recorded, but not released because it didn't turn out to be an album. Right. That's the stuff that FTV is. Okay. So anything beyond your typical Spotify album, all that jazz. Anything that's like actually been released by RCA? Yes. Yes. Okay. So like what made you, like, did you start with like a lot of studio stuff or like, uh, like actual released content and then how did you like transition into like, oh, I want to know more about like outtakes or like songs that didn't make the cut, like things like that. Like, how did you get into all of this? Yeah, absolutely. So if you've been to Graceland, the best gift shop is in the entertainment complex and out is the entertainer museum. Yes. That is where your wallet goes completely empty. (laughs) Empty, broke, poor. Just throwing that there as a plug. That's where all the jumpsuits are. Yes. All of the movie memorabilia out like apparel he wore in the movies yes everything the best one. that's Truly where we is. spend at least four hours yeah oh girl literally that's why we get the tease to be passed we can go back in that one yeah plugs we should get sponsorships for this because right we're, we're hyping up <laughs> it's, so much right if you guys want the tease to be passed right like yeah. plug here thirty dollars um just saying Right. Um, it is worth it though, because there's so literally I could spend eight hours in there and then I'm like, oh, I have to go to the house. Like it's you don't want to rush, you know? True. Right. Go in the morning because no one will be there. Like tour the house in the afternoon. Yes. Go Agreed. To the in the morning. Just Agreed. random plugs for your tour. We'll yes. we go back to that. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, make note. Tour, tour plugs. Yes. Thank you. Got it. We should talk but about go off. when you come out of the jumpsuit exhibit you're thrown right into that gift shop and as soon as you come out there are two shelves of like movies vinyl ftds ftds yes. are thrown in there they're kind of hidden if you're not familiar with what they are yes you might want to but they're all there so when i went in 2020 to graceland there were so many options and i was like oh what are these kind of things? Yeah. So I looked at one and I was like, there's multiple discs. Like, I've never seen this. So I grabbed a couple. And whenever my brother and I go, because he's an Elvis fan too, we mm-hmm. always buy each other like a surprise gift. So no one, like, there's one thing that we get to look forward to whenever we come home or get back to the hotel because we're too eager to wait till we get home. Right, like, right. Me. This, this is the surprise thing I bought for you. So, right. And one of the FTVs was one of them. So, like, that kind of jump started it. And I listened to this and I was like, dude. Half of the stuff on here, I've never heard. I've never heard. Have, have you? Like, right. I was like, what? I was swearing and like, <laughs> people? I'm yes. Like, Whoa. What? Oh what is this? Like, we knew that wild side of him when you watch That's the Way It Is. Uh-huh. You see it. But these, yeah. completely different. If you think you've seen things in That's the Way It Is, you have not seen things or heard things heard when you things. listen to FTDs. Right. There is no censorship. No filter. Some things are probably edited, but... It is straight Elvis in the raw. I always say that when I post clips. I'm like, this yeah. is Elvis in the raw. Oh, there's nothing so. better. There's nothing better than that. Yes. That was the gateway. And I was like, I wonder if I could collect all of these. So I started with all of the official RCA released albums, like movie soundtracks, uh-huh. all of those. And the live stuff, I, I hate to admit this, but I was not into it in the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. I know some people who aren't. Yeah, yeah. Well, because it's like so repetitive i understand yes and that's what i've at, heard yes you look at 74 75 76 mm-hmm. like those years individually you're gonna hear the same set set list. List. i'm not gonna lie right. right 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 he sings it differently each time which is why i'll come back to that too right but why we love yes i was like i yeah. don't know if i like this it's the same thing and these are yeah expensive. I caved eventually, but right. that's what like a lot of these top ones are, is all of the studio albums and the okay. movie, like the movie, and the movie ones. Records. Okay, yeah. and then we got into like the live stuff. Yeah, all that is down here. That's awesome. <laughs> and like that's now your like your vibe. Like you you would choose one of those over, not over, but like that's what you would reach for. I, it depends on the day. That's we'll true. About this too, but. The, the mood of Elvis that you're listening to depends on, like, the weather, <laughs> how Facts. you're feeling, Facts. just overall vibes. 
Very, very true. I love the little like reels. Too? Yes, yes. Okay. And I was just gonna say, I love the reels that you make when it's like your eldest songs on shuffle because, like, <laughs> girl, it's like you instantly match the vibe of every song that comes on. <laughs> And I'm like, that's me. Like, literally, Barefoot Ballad could come on, and I'd be like, yeah, like, in the car. And then, like, <laughs> in the garden will come on next, and I'll be like, no, you're so right, though. Like, it, it's so, it's so, it's, each one is captivating for some reason. Not to say, like, Barefoot Ballad is captivating, but I'm like, girl, I don't know. It's just, like, everything, there's. It can be. Kissing cousins I'm, whatever. No, and that's the thing. Like, I feel like there's not one Elvis song that I'm like, get this off. You know? Except maybe for like if it's overplayed or yeah. old ship. I cannot stand old ship. I have to always skip that one. Just because it makes me sad. But like I, it's never because I'm like, oh, like his voice, or like, oh, he sounds so dead, or like, oh, this has no beat to it, no vibes, <laughs> no nothing. Like <laughs> Every song gives something, you know? Yeah. Maybe. It's true. I don't know. Some people would argue with that. But I, I feel like I could get down. <laughs> I could get down to anyone. Get down. <laughs> no, true. True. I could I could get lit. Sorry. <laughs> no. I, <laughs> hey, you're speaking you're speaking the truth. Just right. Fly. Speaking my truth. Let but fly. um yeah. I don't know. I was going to say, too, like, with the live albums, um, we were talking about how something that makes those special is, like, those little moments in there where he'll, like, just start singing something that's not, like, on his regular, like, it's not an Elvis Elvis song, per se, like, not one yep. that he usually sings. And he'll sing, like, a minute or two of it or, like, just give us a little taste. And then he'll be like, anyways, um, and then he'll, like, move on to regularly scheduled content. Yeah. Like, this this phrase came to me a few weeks ago and is perfectly fitting. I'm the ready. Set, the set list that was ready for that night yeah. was just a starting point for how it was going to go. Yes, yes, yes. And it it could barely have been a starting point. There was one, like, I think it was June 1st, 75. It's on one of the FTDs. Uh -huh. He starts singing Burning... He tries to start singing Burning Love and he doesn't know the words. He's like... What are the words? And you can hear the sweet inspirations in the background. They're like, I've been my temperature rise and what? Yeah, they're trying. They're trying to give him the Yes, the they're hints. trying so hard. And he just, the song starts, he gets maybe like 15 seconds into it. He's like, you know, I don't want to do it anyway. Let's just do Pope Style Annie. It's like, <laughs> okay, so you didn't even follow the set list. <laughs> right. No, that's classic but, Elvis. And if you yeah. listen to his band members talk to, like, they'll be like, girl, we had two eyes glued at all times because we didn't know what he was going to do. Yeah. Like, and that's crazy. That's the beauty of it because you yeah. listen to a concert, you don't know what you're gonna get. Yeah, facts. Like Elvis listened to the crowd. If they yelled out a song recommendation, he would more often than not he would do it. Piece. Right. I would have yelled out "Change of Habit." Oh, like yeah. I feel like that would have been <laughs> lit. Like the keys live on that. Like I know. Ooh, I know. Oh, I was humbled cool. because I had a moment in my car like a while ago I was like he sang this live right like come on and I was like googling for it I was like I can't find it um and then everyone was like no Mary he never did that um you imagine that and I'm like oh but can you can you like imagine though those instrumentals live like live in 69 that would have been a prime literally that, that literally was the that. Whole vibe. I I do have like my favorite moment um like non set list, non Elvis song even moment Ooh, where he just okay. like sang a song and I'm I want I've been saving this because I want to see if you know Ooh, like what I'm talking seat. about. Okay, I'm in the hot yes. seat. Ready? I'm ready. I'm genuinely asking this question because I have no idea oh. where when he sang this. I just know that he did. Okay. Um, and I cry every time because it's actually like amazing and incredible. But he sings "Turn Around, Look at Me" like a oh. very very small snippet of it but oh my heavens like every single time he sings it i cry like it's his voice is unreal and it's just like little moments like that where he sings things i'm like why did you never record this like little things like that and then he'll just be like anyways so uh i'm gonna sing uh, be good? Falling like, in love like like we need to talk about what you just did but do you know anything about that yeah 
that turn mm -hmm. around that part yes look at me do you know the um mirror my god too yes mirror. okay you're, let me hear you're, it you're gonna school be mind blown where it's from school me i'm ready i'm ready Elvis on tour. <laughs> Really? Girl, when he is rehearsing, <gasps> like, have you seen that in, oh my gosh, okay. It's part of the gospel Wait. segment that they cut out. No, it's not. Yes. What? That's from that, that is, all to be a fly on the wall. That is all Elvis on tour rehearsals. Baz I know. Lerman. I know. Listen to my words now. <laughs> Mr. Lerman. Oh my gosh. Can, can you imagine though? Yeah. Okay. Building off this too, whenever you, yes. there's only audio for something and you don't have a visual. Yeah. You picturing what it looks like and then seeing what it looks like once footage is released, you're like, I'm it would, sorry. What? Right. Right. What? Right. Right. It's like, just, oh. right. And not to get like deep or like weird about it, but like a lot no, of the no. times, a lot of the times that that happens for me, like, I'm like, oh my gosh, like he, the power, like the electricity, it's, it's radiating like through my phone in 2024. Like I'm feeling like I'm there from like this audio that I'm hearing. It's insane. And then like, I'll find like the actual footage and it'll be like 76 or 77 or like a time where he like physically is just like struggling Mm -hmm. a lot and i'm like there i am constantly blown away by the power that he had until his literal end like end career he yeah. there was never there was of course times where he wasn't like as i don't know how to i don't know like there were times where he couldn't be on his like top a game but he was right. still in the top a game like i don't know like to me i'm just like there's never maybe like less energy but never like uh uh, okay, he's boring me. Like, never. No. If there's uh -huh. one thing that never failed him in his entire life, it was his voice and his entertainment talent. Yes. That yes. never... <laughs> it's gonna... It never ceases. It goes do on. it. Oh, don't do it. Don't make me cry right now. Don't <laughs> make me cry. But seriously, like, that... When you... Ugh. Tangent off. coming. Yes, I'm coming. Oh, I'm ready. <laughs> This is another thing about the audio that's just mind blowing. So someone who was basically on top for like 22 years. So let's say yeah. 55 to 77, mm -hmm. 22 years. Yep. The amount his voice changed. Yes. Developed, matured. It was just natural talent. Yes. Like, like I'm sorry, what? And that's part of the reason why I can start to recognize some of these years is because when you listen to it enough, and I highly recommend you listen to Elvis with your headphones mm -hmm. when you can, instead of a speaker, you hear so much more than if you were when you have headphones in. Right. Because it's like you can get like you could pick up on the little things like the instruments and like the little cracks or like even I remember you talking about like the songs where he you can hear him breathing versus like yeah. when you can't hear him taking that breath, but he's still yep. like eats it up with like that high note or whatever and you didn't even hear him breathe for it like mm -hmm. those moments like that you can capture yeah yeah and you hear the audience too like this was something i realized last week i kid you not so yeah. that's the way it is you know in the movie when he goes one night he goes remember do -do 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 yes part? yes yes so yes the reason that everyone was so thrown off is because someone in the audience yelled one night i heard it with headphones i was like wait a minute someone requested that this was not just off the cuff. Yes. Someone said that. And he was like, well, not. Remember? And then yeah. they stopped. Yeah, and like, then the band they got didn't it. No. Like, what? Stop it. Yes. Stop. Just the little thing. It's like little Easter eggs like that, too. Like, even outside of the FTDs, like, the FTDs are perfect for it. But even like the studio stuff, sometimes I'll just like pick up on stuff. I'm like, I never even noticed that or I didn't know he was talking to that person when he did this or like little things like that where it's like oh like it new things every day and it's so fun 
I love it. That's, seriously. And that's why when everybody asks, like, are you sick of listening to Elvis? Like, didn't he only have uh, like six songs? I'm like, they only play six songs on the radio. Don't get me started on that. But right. <laughs> right. When you listen right. to all of these live concerts, it's like yeah. he could have sang the same song 300 times. Would it have been sung the same way every time? Absolutely mm -hmm. not. It no. fed off the audience. It fed off how the band was feeling. Someone discovered a lick. Whatever. Right. It's all different. Right, right. And I love that you're talking to, I remember me and my mom having this conversation growing up because we would listen to like 50s music and then like, like we always had Elvis radio. So they, they played like a 56 song or something like that. And then like the next song would be like, um, like a 70s moment, like way down or something. And my mom would always be like, oh, his voice just sounds so not better but so different like he's really developed and matured as an artist over these years and it's so notable like some people they could be singing for years and years and it's like you can tell that they got older mm -hmm. like you can you can hear their aging in their voice almost if that makes sense but it, you can't tell like how they've become more like skilled and well-rounded and like whole as an artist I think that that's Elvis like his voice developed such like a richness and like a rawness as he's as he grew um and of course it would because when you're 20 whatever like your voice would be but it, even then like, he had such a like a falsetto like a such a light like airy voice too that was so impressive and then Oh, I don't even know. I'm I'm not making any sense, but it is so cool to like see that progression and like hear how he I don't know, progressed. Um no. my drop real quick. Just facts. facts. <laughs> and it's like that you. too. It's that like and also just like you're saying the versions of the songs over the years. Like he's saying what? Like Love Me Tender or like Can't Falling in Love forever, girl, like a yeah. decade long. Um but there's different versions of it. And I love when you post like, which version is your favorite? And you'll post like the little snippets of each like time he sang it. I love stuff like that to hear how a song like developed over the years. Yeah, you took my next thought out of- Sorry. No, 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 no. We're on the Sorry. same wavelength. Like, yes, no, go like talk like... about it though. Cause you, no. you eat it up every time you do. Same wavelength. And yeah. that's why sometimes it even works to line them up at the same time. Yeah. Like when I can get you gave me a mountain from 72, 73, and 77 to go at the same time, I was like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, what? He's singing backup for himself in 77. And then like <laughs> I know. I know. Blowing your mind every day. I'm gonna fall out of my chair. Right. That has happened. Right. Just... Oh. She's literally hit the ground out of astonishment. Uh, there are a few folks who could verify that. <laughs> I love that. Bring there's them on. No. <laughs> there's a, yeah, seriously, there's a few. I love it. No, but it's so true because it does blow you away. And like you could be a fan for however long and it'll still, there'll still be things that are like, no way, no way. Yeah. No way. This, ooh, okay. So another point going back to your like how he developed as an artist over time. Uh -huh. So when you watch Aloha from Hawaii, not yes. the rehearsal, the actual, you can see the way he's like, working the microphone if you watch i don't know if anyone has paid attention to this but yeah. um when he ends like you gave me a mountain like he fades the mic away it's like that's not because he's yeah. feeling stuff that's intentional because he knows it's being recorded so he's trying to make his voice not just cut like ah! and cut like, out ah! yeah he's oh. making it fade out and if you watch when he records like early morning rain kuuipo Mm -hmm. Hawaii wedding song at the end he covers the mic a little bit too so like he knows how to work stuff over time he figured out how to make things sound a certain way yeah and it, it's like that artistic ability is just incredible Unmatched. to observe yes to, to observe and just to also think like Kent oh sometimes I think about it he never had lessons like no. he was never taught no. of course like there he would have had like mentors people he looked up to like styles that he was like oh i want to try this i want to try this but like at the end of the day he created his his whole career himself and that's in that's crazy to me he literally yeah. built it from the ground up himself like yes that's insane well and he listened to so many types of music when you yeah. the house and you see in the tv room every vinyl he had the genre yes. the right. genre span is insane like from opera right. 
country. But you're Truly. at the free end of the spectrum. And he took yep. pieces, wisdom from all of that, like yep. let alone his band members, because you have the sweet inspirations. Straight yeah. up soul. You got yep. it. Yes. You're in the stance. Yes. You're basically gospel. And it's, you have everything. It's so. The best self. No, literally. Literally. He used. I don't know. You can just tell like how much he loved music. Like that is, that's a true sign of somebody who just like fed off of that inspiration of music and like how, what he grew up with molded him so much too, like his roots and that gospel and that soul and all of that stuff and how he carried that with him literally until he didn't, you know, like 77, like when he was done, um, he kept all of that stuff. And it's because I think he, just like needed it like you know when that's like true artistry when you can i don't know you can be inspired by something and connect with something so deeply and then find ways to intertwine it with the the kind of art that you make and then that speaks for you as well because who you're inspired by who you're influenced by is a part of you and mm -hmm. a part of your sound and your career and i feel like people get that twisted a lot and they make it to seem like, oh, he stole it or he took it or he whatever. Like he he was trying to make people think that he invented this when he was the first one to always say, like, this is where this originated from. You can even listen to it in the 68th special. He's talking about the origins of rock music and about Look soul and blues. Go. Yes. Like says, you go. Yeah, girl, let me, you go. that's the one thing that I know, like, you go, because it's, it's so important, like, he, imagine, like, hating him, all of him, just because you think that he took from other people, like, no, any artist, every single artist is inspired by somebody else, how do you, how do you grow, how do you, you know, how do you figure out what you like, if you don't watch what other people do and take inspiration, like, I don't know, I just feel like that yeah. that's a big part of Elvis history that gets, not like misunderstood a lot i think yep i agree no. i think misunderstood is the best best way to describe it because yeah again this is not you know standing up for it or being against it by any right. means just right times were so different back then yes and like laws around taking music recording music all that so mm. different so different so you're not True. truly comparing apples to apples it's true. When that subject is brought to the forefront. True. I understand there's two ways of looking at it. You can look at it that he stole music. You can look at it and take it and say he enhanced it, brought it to the limelight. Because who knows, if he didn't record those songs, would anyone have known who originally recorded it or who may have and, wrote it? Right. Like, that's the thing. So yeah. many of those artists have said, like, he's opened the door because, like you're saying, times were different. Like, there was a time where people would not play other music because it was written by somebody who was Black or, like, something, yeah. like, as harsh as that, but it was reality. Like, Elvis brought so much of that music out and showed it to people. And then, like, people found out who those, you know, songwriters were and yeah. they became interested in that type of music. Like, he he opened the door in so many ways. And that's another thing that's attracted me to him and his artistry and his career too, is like yeah. how he was an innovator and how he like was a, he broke down like segregation in a lot of ways. Like it's just so cool to see how his music impacted society without him even really like setting out to be like, I'm going to do this so that this happens and this happens. Like he didn't have a game plan. He was just being himself and doing what he wanted to do and look what he did for so many other people like it's crazy yeah he just yeah. did what he felt i mean he always did that yeah yeah we love him for that all right we love him for a lot of things Th these are we just... would be here all day <laughs> we would be here all day. and yeah i right, think our phones right. would die before we right <laughs> battery dead uh recording would not be saved if we listed all of the things we love yes but it is, it is true. Yes. Okay. Wait, so I have another question for you on okay. like overall music, FTDs, that kind of thing. Okay. So I know you've started to dip your toes into the yes. FTD musical waters. A little bit. Yes. Okay. What has been your experience so far slash any favorite memorable moments that you have? Oh, I love that question. Um, okay. Well, well, <laughs> someone named Maria actually made me a PowerPoint. 
Um, and it listed like, yeah, this really cool girl named Maria. I think you should actually check her out. Um, but she made me a PowerPoint of like all of these FTDs that were her personal favorite. And then I went and put those into like a YouTube playlist. Um, and I've been listening to that ever since you made that for me. And that's been a complete game changer because half that stuff, I've most of that stuff, almost 98% of that stuff, probably I have never heard in my life. Yeah. Okay. Mission accomplished. So, right. I have you to thank for that. Oh, um, so and it's, it's been so, so cool because like, literally, like I was talking about that moment where I heard him saying, turn around. Um, and there's been moments like that where I'm like, oh, I cannot believe like that one note in a song that I've heard a thousand times, but it's like the way he sings that one part of that one song in this one, like show it just like changes everything and then you just want to keep like listening to it again and again and it becomes so cool and then the cool thing also about like making a youtube playlist or whatever is that you get recommendations um based off of what you do listen to so i found so much more stuff because of you and because of what you've like shown me that i've been adding to the to the playlist as well so it's been amazing and incredible i own one i think on i live in the country yes i think that's the only one i have though like physical copy Ooh. i think and i what can i say i'm a sucker for anything while i'm in the country okay. i do love that it. i do and i want to get i want to try out more like movie I, we've talked about this too but like movie soundtracks i would really like to hear more of like studio recordings and things like that but the live shows there's so many available on youtube and it's been a game changer for me Ugh. period period that makes me so happy just oh. it's See, it's been awesome we, we've come full circle everybody in this community yeah. has something different to offer Yes. We're sharing, we're sharing the love. You're learning the live stuff, all the FTDs. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. The FTDs and just literally everything, all this. Right. So. It's it's awesome. And like it's so cool too because I've been fortunate enough to like visit some venues. And so it's cool when you can like match a venue with like where you've heard. Like I remember like hearing like a Fort Worth um FTD or something. I don't know. Yeah. There's something. There's I there's yeah. a few. There's a few Fort Worth ones, I think. But um I heard one and then I like was able to go visit like the venue or something that I was at with my friend and we were playing it like with the windows down, like just looking at the venue. It was very cool. It was very cool. See that see that is always so cool, but then when you're in the moment you never realize what you're actually listening to, staring at. It doesn't hit you no, until like never. you look at the pictures like a month later or something. Never. No, no, I know, but it's unreal. Yeah. It just needs to happen more often. If these venues weren't so far apart, <laughs> if they weren't so far apart, if they weren't getting torn down literally every day, uh, girl, can we talk about that? Like, yeah, there is nothing in my home state. There's nothing, and he played here so much, like in the fifties and. I mean, he played New Year's Eve in um, Pittsburgh in 76, and that's gone. Yeah. Like, I know. Sad. I know. Well, the one thing I will say, though, and this kind of goes along, like, whenever you visit Graceland, like, mm -hmm. it's so cool to be there. It never hits you when you're there. You're like, oh, my gosh, this is where Elvis was just riding Rising Sun along. Yep. The gate yep. signing autographs. You could stand mm -hmm. there for three days and still just be like. Yeah. Yeah. And what? It does it. <laughs> It doesn't. And there's moments too. I think that ties into like moments that I have even doing what we do, like, um, like digging into like his life as much as we do. And like, we realize he was real and he actually lived and we recognize that, but it's like, sometimes it just, there's moments where it just hits you where you're like, oh my gosh, he like lived here. Like, especially when you're at Grayson, like he, he looked in this mirror, like I'm looking in this mirror and like, there's just little things like that where it's like, so it's so it's such a privilege to be able to walk in those footsteps because so many people didn't get their stuff preserved as well as he did and it's very for we're very fortunate i don't know why but the mirror thing just hit me so hard it, <laughs> like, like just little things like that mirror. right what? like when you're walking down the stairs to the basement or something like those mirrors were there and he oh. saw himself in those mirrors he looked at himself in those mirrors i'm sure he did 
Like, oh, there's no doubt. Right. No little, doubt. Little things like that. Like, you know that, um, uh, you know, when like you're in the kitchen and you turn right to go, I think down the stairs to the basement mm -hmm. and on that wall, there's like that little the electric like, board. Yes. And it's got yes. his writing on it. Like he's, uh -huh. he's written like what each switch kind of does. Uh -huh. and it's just there. It's just left there. Like he wrote, like, I don't know. Not to like sound like a weird fan girl. Like, oh my goodness, he touched this. But it's like, no, it's just like little pieces of him that are left. And then you kind of get sad because you're like, the only thing that's missing is him. Like, he's not here. And all this stuff is like, it's just, it's, it's great. And it's sad and it's exciting, exhilarating. It's everything at once. And it's just like overwhelming sometimes when you're there because it's so much. Okay, cue another mic drop because <laughs> you're just hitting like all of the points. I, I was like, yes, this, yeah, you're going. I know you'll going. understand. I know mm -hmm. you'll get this because you always talk about it too. Yes. Oh, I, I love this topic so much, but like building off that too. So yeah. not a lot of people know this. So like when you first walk into the house, everybody knows the chandelier situation where one of the links is missing uh -huh. because Elvis was doing karate stunts, you know. And he hit it, right? Yeah. The link is still missing. Yeah. There's also, as soon as you walk into the house, turn up to like the right, like automatically turn to the right in that top uh -huh. corner. You will see a little like X on the ceiling or like little cracks. <laughs> so this is from when Elvis shot the toilet. And there was like a huge water, <laughs> huge water burst. And you can see how it impacted the ceiling as soon as you walk in. Stop. So, yes. Yes, yes, yes. It exists. I have pictures. If anyone has questions or wants to see it, I have pictures. I think I posted about it before. What? But yes, pay attention. Oh. We love these little tidbits. But the reason yes. I bring this up is because this comes back to your point of Graceland has been so well preserved. Mm -hmm. But the way that they've done it shows that it was a home. Like, you can yes. tell someone lived here. You can mm -hmm. tell this house meant so much to someone. They mm -hmm. preserved it in the way that it deserves to be preserved, first of all. And second of all, the fact that the upstairs is, like, he's still living up there. Like, what mm -hmm. does that tell you? This right. is a house. This meant everything to him. And just seeing that is so incredible. And that's probably part of the reason why it never hits for us. Mm -hmm. that this was actually the house is because it's so well preserved it it feels like you're walk it, every time and this is my feeling every single time i've been and every time i continue to go is that you're just walking into a friend's home like yeah the door is being open for you just to have a visit it never feels like i don't know a museum it's never felt like that to me it just felt like i was invited in and like i love that little story that you told about the ceiling and i i can't wait to go check it out now um yeah. But, like, I love that they don't fix things like that. Like, leave that kind of stuff there because it shows, like, I don't want it to be perfect. I don't, I literally want to see, like, the wear and the tear and the loved qualities that this house had over the years. And I know some things were changed, like, some furniture, some whatever, like, right. things were put back to the way that they were at some point, whatever. But for the most part, like, it just feels like he stepped out for a minute. Like, it really feels like a home, you know? And that's part of the magic too. Like when you walk into that house, if you've been to Graceland, you know, there's this, like his spirit is there. He is there. Absolutely. There, you cannot describe the vibe. You walk in and you're like, nope. Nope. He's yeah. in your corner. <laughs> yeah. Like, no. He's going to come down the stairs. Like you're, yeah. you're waiting for him to like turn the corner or like come walking. Jewelry or, like, jangling, like Lisa Marie Literally. Was, like I knew my dad was coming down the stairs because you know, his six necklaces would be booming. <laughs> Right, boom in. No, literally, he would be making the appearance. Yeah, and that like it's so crazy too because you hear like the stories of people talking about like how he would he would always eventually come down. He might be a little fashionably late, but he would always come down. And I always wait for it. Like there's a part of me that's like, oh, he's just he's you know he's taking his time. You're like, like give he me one second. Did. I'm just right. Let me wait for him. They're like, ma'am, the house is closing. It's six p.m. I'm like, no, no, no. You don't understand. Like, <laughs> I just turn fully crazy but it, but all jokes aside it is so true and that is something that like unless you understand you wouldn't understand you know right. like walking into that house as a fan or as just somebody who loves him like it's it there it's a feeling like no other feeling in the world 
and it hits Preach. every time, no matter how many times you've been. Preach. Yeah. Yep. Preach. Oh, I, I mean, <laughs> again, as you said, like, it's such a blessing. Like, we're so grateful that we get the opportunity to go into mm -hmm. that house. Like, literally take your time and just absorb yes. where you are as a fan. Yep. And it's indescribable. If you don't, if you haven't gone and you get the chance to go, please go. I please, please. please go. But the reason what I'm getting at is yes, yes. so great. So great to have that experience. Yeah. But it's also sad as you were saying earlier to like realize mm -hmm. that he actually is gone when you hit the meditation garden and you look yeah. down and you're like, no. Yeah. No. It's true. Because in this Elvis community, he's alive. Mm -hmm. We're posting videos of him. <sighs> we have photos and that's what all this music is. This music is what keeps him alive. Absolutely. Him alive with his movies. And that's the uplifting part. Like the house, you're like, yes, I get to tour this and see it. But it makes you realize right. he's gone. I'm like, yeah. this is where the music comes for me because this is, he's alive. Absolutely. Yeah, oh, don't make me cry right now. Like, girl, <laughs> that hit me in the heart. Um, and it's so true. It's so true. And again, you wouldn't get it if you don't get it. Like. Yeah. But it's like ugh, he is alive in so many ways. He's alive in so many like through the music, through his movies, if you like his movies, through us. Like if you've ever gone for Elvis Week, if you ever stand in line for the vigil, like he is so you can't tell me that that man is dead. Like you can't. Like mm -mm. all those people there, I'm literally gonna nope. cry. Oh, like the <laughs> candles, like you look and for you can't even see beyond it like there's the crowd of people with all like that light and like that love and it's just all happening in front of you and it every single time i'm there i'm like i cannot believe how many people still come out and do this and and love him still like there's no way that he's gone and he will be alive in so many ways for such a long time and I'm so privileged to be able to contribute to that because it's people like you and me and everybody else in this awesome community that like continues to carry that flame. And um, it's 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 incredible to see and to witness and to be a part of. And there's literally like no other feeling. You hit the nail on the head with that. Again, what you just said, <laughs> we've come full circle, but that's right. like the entire reason for the eternal flame behind his grave. Like Absolutely. there's, there is no end. Yeah. A concert might end. Yeah. An album might end, but that's not the end of Elvis Presley. I'm sorry. Right. Right. right there right. is no end. Right. Plus, no. We're around. We're keeping this stuff alive. Everyone's like, you're born in the wrong era. I'm like, excuse. Well, yes, I could be, but yes, but also, also keep it alive. yes, to keep, yes, to keep the importance of the past still here and like relevant, yep. you know, mm -hmm. I, I agree with you a hundred percent, a hundred percent. Oh, I love that. I love that so much. Don't. His, the album might end, but he is still here. Don't start with me, girl. That is, and it's real. Sometimes the end is just the beginning. It's real. And that cue our life right now. Cause like, <laughs> it's so true. Like if you would have told me, Mary, as a freshman in college, when I started this account, that this would be uh -huh. what my life is looking like right now, or like where my life might be headed. I would have literally never believed you. Like the way that Elvis had come in and like worked with God up there and like fiddled around and like moved me here and here and like moved this person over here to be by me. And like, you know, like it's, it's unreal. And there's no denying that like he had a part in so much of my life, like so many amazing memories, so many amazing memories coming. Like it's just, he truly like such a, a source of joy and like for me and for you and I'm sure so many other people but like he is joy and I'm I am proof like it's real <laughs> I'm getting deep but like you know hey we've committed, we've committed. we have Just let it happen we have committed I'm me getting my tissues sorry guys <laughs> like let my nose run because I am you're bringing out the emotions that Oh my that's gosh. what happens that's honestly how we all get connected to him because something draws you in it's one note one run one lick one story piece one person mm -hmm. somebody bigger than you and i it's that's what it is 
It's true. I love that you said that because that's like the whole. I love this conversation so much. Like, <laughs> oh, I knew it would eat. Same. I knew it would eat because it's you. And that is just like the whole purpose of this is like connection. Yeah. And everybody's connected to him in different ways. And then we become connected. And it's like crazy how he plays a part in all of that. I can't even like imagine my life without my Elvis friends that I've met through him. Like, without you, I don't even feel like I met you last year. Like, I feel like I've known you forever cue forever. the beginning of yeah this episode but like <laughs> truly like where would I even we were talking I said this in the last episode too but we were t- me and you were the ones who were talking about it how like growing up we might have been the ones that were you know made fun of for liking him and that caused us to not really have that many buddies that we could relate to yeah. and now because of him and because we love him so much we have all of our buddies that like understand us and that we relate to. And that's awesome. Oh, that hits so hard. It does. This is going to get deep too, but like whenever you're going through difficult times, all you see is the dark. You never, we're all subject to it. And right. Happen. Like right. that's how life works. That's how the human brain works. But looking back on all that now, I'm like, you never would have known all of the light that would have radiated from this. Like, right. Never give up on yourself. You are you for a reason. Everyone else is taken, so don't try to be them. Absolutely. Be yourself. Absolutely. Look, look what all this like. At some point, don't. you're gonna be riding the rainbow. On the other end of the storm is a golden sky. I was thinking of that one. I was Come thinking on. that one. Same I way. Saw your eyes. <laughs> I was like, yeah, she said it. <laughs> She's on. She said yes. it. It's so facts though. Like the little things that make you you, like don't ever give them up because other people don't get it or other people don't understand it or they don't approve it. Like girl, right. if I didn't stick to my little Elvis t-shirts when I was in sixth grade and like <laughs> writing Elvis on my binders or whatever it was, like I would never be here. And like I can think of so many people who have come to me and been like, I really want to make an Elvis account, but like, I just, I don't even know what to post. I, I would be embarrassed. Like if my, my mom found it or something crazy, like, I'm like, girl, you never know. Like you never know what could happen. Just do it. And like, you, you could end up like us. Like the best times in my life have been connected to Elvis Presley and yeah. I will forever be grateful for that. Amen. And how many Amen. people met, like different countries across oceans? Yes. Like, uh, if we didn't have our accounts, we probably wouldn't know half the people that we do. No. All of my friends, all of my closest friends are people I've met through Elvis. Yeah. Every single one. I mean, you got, you have Sarah. Sarah's from, mm-hmm. is Denmark. it Denmark? Craziness. I don't know anybody in Denmark, girl. So I could, <laughs> I could guarantee you I wouldn't know anybody if I didn't have this account and met her through. Yeah. No. You have Maggie, so. Maggie, yes. Like, yeah. England, England girl it's insane connecting everybody like then and yeah. now and it's insane that another example of how he will never die is because he's literally alive connecting people today like craziness but that is how he lives is like by bringing people together as well exactly and you see so many accounts that are from even countries where we, we might not have close friends from like Australia Brazil like yeah Every continent possible. There Literally. is an Elvis account, Elvis fan group. There, we're just everywhere. Elvis is everywhere. He is a. It's always Elvis. Sorry. Sorry. Oh, mm, mm. two for two. <laughs> Look at you. Yeah. It's always Elvis, and it's true. You're you're just explaining the whole concept behind my account name. I love that. I, I remember when you told me that, and now I don't have to ask you the question because we already talked about it, but. I yep. love the meaning behind your name so much because it's it's facts. First of all, thank you. Second of all, yes, it's people are like, what, what do you do on the side? I don't know. It's always all this. Yeah, it's always it's something true. else. It's it is true. Something always, always related. Cue the number of references that have been in here. <laughs> right, right, right. She's it's always, always all it's always all this. She's always in, invested, immersed in something. And it shows because you are wealth of Elvis knowledge, my friend. And I'm obsessed you as well yeah wait is yours okay my boy my boy like straight up 68 comeback yes or is there alternate meanings behind this um he is my boy Uh, oh you know what i mean he's like my guy i'm not naming it my guy my guy that would be kind of (laughs) weird 
you know. My dude, my dude. My dude, yeah, for real. Like, imagine. <laughs> hey, guys, rebranding tonight. Like, oh, all right. Sorry. Right. But no, it was it was mainly 68 because 68 has always been my favorite, like, concert moment um, for a really, concert, you know, whatever. Yes. But that's always been, like, my... Because I love that, like, that was that was his rebrand. Like, that was his coming back era where he was just back and better than ever and, like, took a hold of his career the way he wanted to do it. Um, And so... Oh, my gosh. Yeah. I love that. That was, again, so much deeper than I anticipated. But that... True. That suits you so well. It, yeah, it is my vibe it to get suits deep. suits you. Yes, yes. And then, like, I don't know, like, my... uh. My personal account is my girl, my girl. But that's just because he says it that one time. And I was like, oh, you my know what? That's kind of, it's kind of perfect. Oh, but yes. that was about, I think Shelly Fabre, was it? That he said that? He was like, uh, he was introducing her, I think, during a show in 69. Was it Shelly? Uh, I feel I, like it, no, 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 no. Oh my gosh, it's from the 68 comeback too. Is it? Yeah. Oh yes, he does say it then. He does <laughs> say it then. My girl, he, my girl, I can't, what is the part? Oh my God. It's the part, it's the part, it's the part where uh, they're in that like weird um, carnival type thing, isn't it? And he's like oh, watching okay. her it's like before, walk away. It's before it. um the, uh, uh, when he's singing Guitar Man and that girl comes to take the guitar away and then she walks away to yes. like follow him, the Bordello scene. Yes, and then he goes, yes. My girl, my girl, and then just... <laughs> And then he just follows her. He's like watching her like walk past. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's that's the other end of the the stick. Is that a phrase? I don't know. It it works. It works. I it know is. What you're down. Thank you. I Thank you. Down. People probably look at that and they're like, huh? <laughs> uh, but you know, that was my reasoning behind that. <laughs> I love uh, it. Yes. Um, I have another question for you. Yeah, fire, fire away. I like to ask, I like to ask, well, I've had like, you're my third guest, so I'm trying to ask every person this, Ooh, but I like if, I, I don't know, like, there's no right answer or whatever, but if there's one thing, or multiple things, if there are, if there are, is something that you would like the Elvis world or like other Elvis fans to know, what would that be? As like an Elvis fan yourself, what would you want to tell other Elvis fans? Ooh, this is deep. Yeah, it doesn't have to be, but like also, if you want to make it deep. <laughs> I'm here the for gateway, it. The gateway is open. Ooh. Yes. Something that you would want all those fans to know. Honestly, never stop learning. Like. I love it. I, again, this kind of comes back to like, I didn't like live concerts before. I didn't like rehearsal footage before. Mm -hmm. Now, that stuff I dig. Yeah. Like, you can't get more real than that. And this comes back to what we were saying earlier is, you have to learn every aspect, every perspective about Elvis so you can weed out the facts from... Right. Full picture. Yes. Mm -hmm. You you got to learn every spectrum possible to understand right. this human being who Absolutely. basically transformed music in a 42 lifespan. Period. Period. Yeah. Period. It's that, so true. I feel like that was so basic but there's no. just so much to learn there is and it's you, the gateway to everything i would tell that to even like a non-elvis fan like that we see so much of that like with what we do too like people just talking when they don't when they haven't learned first and like they just right. spew like things that they've heard before and maybe don't really know that much about Mm -hmm. um so I would tell that to literally everybody girl like that's such a good answer because like there's so much to learn and even as an Elvis fan of how many years like you could be an Elvis fan your whole life and still not know things or like not fully understand things so um and he deserves that he deserves that time to put in to really understand his life because yeah. I would want that for me like if I was not here to talk for myself anymore um and I had people talking for me I would want them to know me first you know so yeah i feel like every human being deserves that um respect Absolutely. yeah i love that Absolutely. answer well and kind of the hard thing too is when elvis was alive half of the stuff he went through no one had any idea 
we've mm-hmm. learned so much about him after his passing from oh, yeah. whether it's books from people like all these live audios we hear there's plugs for certain things you're like oh that was happening at this time like shows yeah. got canceled because of this like health related not health related yeah people didn't yeah. know they were just like oh he's doing drugs he's yeah. off the charts for this reason it's like right that may have you been don't... the case at some points but that's not the last five years of his life absolutely yeah so not black that's the something i say like so not black and white like right nobody's life is black and white like you can't just sum it up in simple terms like there are so many reasons why or like you know things to consider um again those puzzle pieces like you got to put them together to like fully understand some of the stuff he didn't even know what was going on like he was living it and he didn't even understand yeah so it's like it's truly crazy how some people just feel so comfortable saying like this is the way it was when it's like girl you have to consider so much before you even make a statement sometimes i'm like i don't even feel comfortable saying like this is how he felt because how yeah. would i you know you know all i have I is can only... notes in a book yeah right like I don't all know. you can do is really like put together those pieces and like kind of be a psychologist you know i don't know like kind of it's really just figuring out like a human mind kind of thing honestly yeah yeah it's a straight up psychology game yeah like okay what was going on at this point in his life how does that fit into what i'm either listening to reading about watching whatever right Right. trying to connect some kind of factual dot it's not Mm -hmm. easy by any means no it gives you perspective that you can apply to other aspects of his life and say okay similar patterns over here right occurring over here this is why yeah and that's something i say too like when you come across a show that maybe wasn't like a 10 out of 10 for him or like up to his standard like up to par for you know how he usually was or like even a movie role like okay girl like why is he so why is this movie so slow or something like why does it suck to some (laughs) people like some people are like okay no it's just bad like he looks bad he's his acting is on the floor like his his stage presence was sucky like but it's like you okay you have to like consider though what was going on behind the scenes in that time period and there was so much like yep yeah that's That's true yeah as he says walk a mile in his shoes like if anyone would have set foot in his shoes for literally one song Mm -hmm yeah you Lord don't knows know. what you would have taken away from that because absolutely i personally cannot imagine having the life that he had not a no girl not a day goes by where i'm not jaw on the floor over what he did knowing some of the things that were going on behind the curtain you know yep. exactly. craziness that's what makes him like a hero to me too like he did so much during during crazy times in his life where just things were not going great his body was literally uh failing him and he still did all that stuff like no way and he still treated people the way he treated people like he wasn't miserable like he wasn't a meanie like that's crazy to me yeah you you see so much footage too of people who would have just bombarded the stage like there's footage and photos of someone during that's the way it is. This girl hops up on stage, goes yes. and kisses him, and he yes. just like looks away, kisses her, and then moves on. It's like, yep. who does that? Yeah, literally, literally, is nobody. What? Nobody, nobody today is doing all that. Nobody. No. And no. I feel like no one has been able to capture the essence of what he was been able to do. Like what we were saying earlier with his voice. Yes, it changed over the span of twenty two years. That's incredible. Like one person's voice could have matured, developed, mm-hmm. like aged the way it did. Right. It's you can't even wrap your head around it. No, you can't. And that's a thing too. I feel like so many people don't who are Elvis fans are like, why do you? Why is it so like? Because being an Elvis fan isn't like we were. Ta- I was talking with Natasha in my last episode, and we were talking about like being an Elvis fan isn't like being a fan of anybody else. It's like a special. It's a more yeah. special connection. Like. Love if you're that. an Elvis fan, you can't explain it. Like that one George Klein quote. Come back I to love that. So often. Yes, yes. It's so good because it's so true. And it's like the people who don't really understand like how he treated us and how he's still treating us in his way. Like they don't understand why it is such like, a special connection. Um, 
with us who like people who haven't even met him like it's it's really weird for people to like be able to understand like girl you don't even know him and you feel that way but it's like I don't know like it's just the way that he was and the way that he still continues to be that like once he grabs a hold there's no there's no letting go yeah mm -hmm. that what is it no if you're an Elvis fan no explanation is necessary but if you're not an Elvis fan no explanation is possible period yes I'm like yes. there is no better quote to all encompass the Elvis fandom than that if you yeah. get it you get it if you don't you don't if you don't yeah. then move it right and don't feel bad like I <laughs> don't feel bad if people tell you you're weird or you're like wrong or whatever because bring on the weird whatever yes be yourself <laughs> like be yourself girl and if you're weird for if I'm a fool for loving you I am uh, so proud yeah, of you. Can I just cool. say the number uh, of references? I'm so proud of you. Thank you. Thank you. I I'm so turning into you. you. I'm turning into you. Cool. Welcome to my world. Uh, and there it is, ladies and gents. <laughs> so quick with it. So quick oh, with it. Oh, this is getting really bad. Feel so bad. <sighs> feel, uh, <laughs> girl, <laughs> stop. Don't do it. Cool. Okay, there has to be like, I don't even know. I've lost count. I've lost count. There's yeah. a good few. There's a good few in here. Good few. A good few. Good few quotable moments. Yeah. Do you yeah. have any other questions, concerns? I concerns. I will have one more plug for you. I don't know right. if this was on my previous suggested list of FTVs, but oh. we're on the rehearsal scheme. Uh huh. This will be a a PSA for everyone. Okay. So. My goal is to collect all of the FTVs. So at some point I can have better knowledge of all of them. Now Love. I have decent understanding, but Okay. Oh, this ready. FTV, there are two of them. I'm gonna bring to the, the limelight. All right, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm okay. have a pen. First one, Elvis from Sunset to Las Vegas. From Sunset to Las Vegas. Yes. This is all rehearsals from August. 74 and september 74 it's kind of a compilation album okay um i will say there's a lot of if you love me let me know outtakes but look beyond that if you get sick of it or need to skip a little bit <laughs> if you need to um, uh, skip that track yes so okay. the reason i bring this up this was one of those albums that i got and i was like like why did i buy this just like i need the whole collection i'm getting it yeah when I listen to it this is 74 so let me just read a couple of the songs that are on here and you'll see why I'm like mind blown. Okay, so, I'm ready. Um, down in the alley. What? Yes. In '74. Down in the alley rehearsals in '74. Ooh. I'm gonna come full circle on the next FDD I'm gonna bring up after this. Okay. Okay. Yes. So I'm down in the alley. It's midnight. Your love's been a long time coming. Ooh. That's a good, one. good time. Charlie's got the blues. Oh. Live rehearsal. Don't Reha get this me started. This is all rehearsal live. Girl. The first time I saw your face. Proud Mary and If You Talk in Your Sleep. Oh, um, you also the 12th of Never. <gasps> is that on that one? Yes. Is that the one that like we hear on like the the 70s masters whatever that's called? <gasps> you bet your bottom dollar it is. Oh, girl. That's like good quality too. Yes. That um, also, Faded Love and Just Pretend in 74. Just throwing that out there. I remember I faded love. That's Sing a it. good, that's a Sing good it. set list. Set list. Yes. yes. So, Ooh, the reason I bring nice. that up is. Okay. Okay. I'm ready. The next FT. This is Nevada oh. Nights. Okay. Okay. This showcases Elvis's first um opening show for this season in august so august 74 it's august okay. 19th opening show his set okay. list he tried experimenting <laughs> with some of those previous songs in this set list it was not favorable at the time okay at the, the time was, yes the crowd was not yeah. having it because they weren't getting hound dog they weren't getting the standard elvis presley songs that you would want to see right i understand i understand so he opens the show with big boss man girl don't get me started. 68 comeback coming to life my guttural um, response to that 
Yes. So he's saying Big Boss Man is a start. Down in the alley. Good time Charlie's got the blues. If you talk oh. in your sleep. Stop like, in it. Bridge over troubled water. I'm just saying. The songs that came out of the woodwork from this rehearsal to the opening show in the same season, it's so different than any other concert you would get. And I wouldn't have known this without the FTV. Dang. That's that's the kind of show I want to hear. Like, I want to hear him sing the songs he never sang live. Right. So, Ooh. these two, hearing the rehearsal and then the final stage deliverance of it. Yes. You listen, report back I'm to gonna, me. I'm going to. I'm going to. Are they... We need to see if they're on YouTube. They might be. They should be. Okay. If, if they are... Date. Search by the date sometimes, too. Sometimes as opposed to the FTV name. What is it? 74. So we got Nevada Nights as the FTV where the, the set list changes. There's two concerts okay. on this, but the first one I recommended was the first CD. Right. So okay. 74. August. Opening show. Got it. Then you've got Elvis from Sunset to Las Vegas. Mm-hmm. Rehearsals for that opening or for that season. Girl. So... Um, Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, go ahead. So, like, when that kind of tanked, for lack of better words, um, did he, like, switch? I mean, I guess it's, like, only opening night, so, like, maybe you... I don't know. Let me finish my question. Like, did he <laughs> did he switch it? Like, my brain is, like... Did he switch it back to, like, normal set list then after that, like, opening night? Like, so it was just that one night where he's saying that, like, different set list from my understanding that was the f that was the only concert where it would have changed that drastically mm -hmm. like if i go to the second cd he opened with cc Ryder, then i got a woman so like he's still saying big boss man it wasn't the opener mm -hmm. he's still saying a couple of the other songs but like mm -hmm. where the set list changed that drastically and he was singing so many songs like off the record that may not have been singles right that concert was the one Dang. I know. that's so and cool like, down in the alley, you're like, this is 67. That's literally from... Like, what album is that from? Down in the alley. The alley. Yeah, it's uh, Clambic. Yes, it's like one of those extras that was, like, not used in the movie, but it is on the soundtrack. Clambic. Yes, oh my gosh. Is it Clambic? I should know this. Of course I can't find it. But yes, uh, it's an extra on one of them. <laughs> yes, I I know what you're talking about. Like I know the vibes. Yeah. Sorry, my nose is running. Um, no. that is so cool. And now I need to immediately go search for that and listen to it. But yes, the rehearsals are always entertaining. So I'm sure. I'm Even like, it. well, they were like released, so they were like on Apple and Spotify or whatever. But like those, like from Elvis in Memphis. Yes. Um, yes. Not Memphis, Nashville. Oh yeah, yep. Yeah. Right, like the the blue one, the tan one. Yes, those those ones are like rehearsals, but they were actually released out on whatever. So yeah, so can... these are like a good gateway into the FTD world. Yes, like these yes. are a spinoff because there are outtakes and stuff. Yes, like not master takes. So right, yes, these are good. Highly those are good. Those are like what I know of when it comes to like what you're talking about, like outtakes and things like that and things that yes. didn't really, you know, different. When he's just talking, having fun, like goofing off. We love that. We do love that. Do you have like a moment where he sings a song that was not an Elvis song in a show that you really, I'm, we're literally backtracking so far, but like when he sings a song that's like, okay, that's not one that you recorded, but you just sang it anyway. Like, do you have a moment Ooh. that you can think of? Okay, I have two. One of them oh, okay. is when he sings Sweet Inspirations, like Sweet Inspiration. And Do not. Sweet like, oh. I just found that the other day. Oh. For the first time when it was Estelle's birthday. Oh, I called my mom into my room. I was like, listen to this. <laughs> I was, I was shocked because I love the Sweet Inspirations on their own. Like, nice. love them. And when I heard him singing that, I was like, girl, that was so lit. Yes. Love that. Oh my gosh. Okay. I'm just kidding. I have three, but these are quick. The second okay, one. Okay. No, I, I so, love that. 
outside Elvis, huge Dean yes. Martin fan. I know you vibe with me on this. Like Sinatra, yeah. Dean, we're in that realm. Yes. Dean Martin's in yeah. the audience for one of these. I don't think this is when he sings the little snippet, but uh-huh. he did it like a couple nights later. So he like very subtly goes, everybody loves somebody. And then he keeps walking. I'm like, excuse me, finish, finish, the, finish song. the song. <laughs> finish the song. No, no. no. Oh my gosh, everybody. He would eat that song too. Mm-hmm. If he actually I, recorded that song, he would have. That's an Elvis song. Oh, I know. So that kills me. Ooh, um, and then live in LA, 74, he sings this song You can have her. I don't want her. She don't love you anyway. I was like, if that's, you play that, I guarantee it'll go stuck in your head for at least a week. Is it short or is it like. Longer. it's no it's like a full full-blown song wait it's at least a minute or two so you get you get you get a good chunk you get yes what's the what's the date so it this is one of the ftvs i don't have but i know the cover it is a white cover okay. it's wearing the embroidered eagle on the front okay it is live in la 74 live in la 74 so many gems from 74 what's going on Oh, it was just a good let year. me be there from 74. I You were going hard on that one. I was, and it was because, oh, girl, I don't, don't even remember don't make what me pull I, it. Do it, do it. What were we even talking about on that one that I loved so much? Was the, I think that was the album that we were talking about, like him singing, or no, it was the, uh, it was the stamps or somebody was singing like, Killing me softly. Random, yes. yes, 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 it was that one. Yes, and they were just singing it. I was like, did he rip his pants and he had to leave and change? Like, I don't know what was going on then. <laughs> but, like, why are they just singing that? Yeah. Like, he just wanted cool. to. I don't know. It was part that's... of the set list because he sings it on all three concerts. So, oh, so then he did not rip his pants. I, who knows? Unless he, he did it all three nights. I was like, did he literally have to leave the stage and they were like, do a filler, do a filler? Like, I don't know. Killing me softly while my pants split. I don't know. Right, right. Killing me <laughs> softly. How about that? Yeah. This, this that, one, though, that's a good one. That, yes, because this is him fresh after going through kind of a whirlwind, like health wise. Right. October 73, he was hospitalized for a bit. Right. right. Like, literally, no tours, no recording studios. Mm-hmm. This is the result of him resting, getting the help that he needed. And, and it goes. Oh, I love that. I remember you, like, advertising that to me using like that phrase like he just got back from like a a good long rest and like his energy is like peak yeah yeah oh it was not this one but one of the ones from 76 that i sent you where you had a story and you captured live your reaction you were like (gasps) was it when he was singing fairy tale it was was yeah i think so i think it was oh what was the part of it I, I just know the FTV cover because you posted it. Oh, yes. It was that one. He was like, yeah. you news me. You yeah, news me. You and it was, oh, my God. Oh, it was so, it was just like, girl, that pot. And again, 76, girl, like, he had that power, that, mm, that, like, raw, I don't even know how to describe it, but it's like, it blows me away. I was doing my makeup listening to it. Yeah. And, like, I was just gonna, like, post, like, a cute little, like, okay, getting ready. <laughs> and he whipped that out. I was like, oh, that is actually the coolest version of fairy tale i've ever heard in my life i i love that song there's so much like story is not the right word i don't even like using that word but like there is so much spunk to it there is it's like a little i used to hate that song but i not hate but i used to skip it because i was like "Eh." but i'm like girl you know in the beginning when he's like i'd like to something about like this is the story of my life it's called fairy tale or whatever yeah he's like just saying his life is a fairy tale yeah I'm like me. That's the story of my life now, because of you. So I, I, I keep it now, and I love it because wow. of that. Yes. Wow! Yes. Wow! 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 Yes. yes. Okay. It's true. Stellar. It is true, though. Come on. It's facts. Yeah. It's facts. I'm just saying. But if, like, seriously, if you ever have any other FTD questions, anyone else who watches this, like, please, I try to respond to everyone who messages me. Like. It might take a while, but I will respond Please to you do. if it's FTD related, not FTD related. Rehearsal, like you want to share a favorite song? I don't care. Anything. Message me. Like we need to get everyone 
hearing this footage because if, yes. you think you've, if you're in the top 1% of listeners on Spotify, you probably have not even heard 50% of the audio it's like, true. that is available on this man. So it's facts. Please, yeah. Please let us help you join help the... <laughs> let her help you okay you can reach out to mary and then she can say go to see <laughs> right do you but, know uh, no you i'm showing you i'm good. showing you the master yes but seriously like we need to help those who want to join this rabbit hole i don't see daylight anymore it's fine uh, we're not yeah. coming out you're joining me you're like halfway there so i'm already yeah i'm already in it i'm in it deep at this point and i love it and i would not be going back but good. it is it's so true like there's so much so much to still learn and there's so much world to see thank come you, along, thank come you. Along. yes yes we just need to like write a song me and you like <laughs> just write a song using only elvis puns about how you should be listening to ftds and then put it out there or like okay. a poem or something that's gonna be the challenge for next time have a yes. song completely written <laughs> by the time and then we can air it to the world <laughs> yes i'm ready and we'll release it Yes, on the FTD like, label. Three people look at it. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> you I can love that. Our iPads. <laughs> no, literally, just like <laughs> I, I think that's a, an activity for the next time we see each other. Agreed. Yeah. One more quick plug. I just have to say yes. the fact that you do this, like these little chats, getting to know everyone in the community, and just taking time to like learn about them, have these Elvis discussions, is truly like. You're just an inspiration and such a fierce leader in this community. Like trying Thank to you. learn everybody, trying to understand them, get to know them is so incredible. That's what Elvis would do. So mm -hmm. he is shining, radiating through you in that way. So the fact that you Thanks. do all this, just keep doing it. It's awesome. Thank you. You're I awesome. amazing, th incredible. You Every girl spelling out those words. You are. I wouldn't have even. This has been. This has been what I needed. I've been struggling with health for a hot second for the past months and yes. I've been feeling like oh and I know you relate to this too with like just work and like being bogged down with life and it gets to be a lot but like this conversation literally and like this is why I do what I do because it's just like uh connecting over something that you love so much with another person that is just so cool and knowledgeable and you know you just take the time you take the time too like thank you for coming out and like talking with me and sharing so much and i wish we could literally have another hour and a half to talk and maybe we'll do a part two if you guys want to might that. have to i feel like this conversation derailed like right no but we just always have like the best conversations good. so good. it is always good elvis. it's always elvis and i just i'm grateful to friends like you because you make me feel seen and heard and validated and i just i love you and thank you for what you do because you contribute in ways that keep keep it burning girl and i am so lucky to know you and to be able to support oh. you and i love you so much oh my gosh okay you you my tissues now no uh, literally do you want to borrow some of my uh, toilet paper yeah can you pass them through the camera? <laughs> yeah. here you go here you go oh my gosh um <laughs> yeah i i just love you so much what i love you I love how you. did we survive without this i don't know and pretty soon we won't have to wink wink do it anymore and maybe i don't know 30 days something like that what does that mean i don't know mm, maybe I just like one picture together right girl don't get me started it's a crime that we don't have any images of just us i could crop one true i tried today like i did a story and i like tried to crop it because you it was perfect like you were in between me and sophia so oh. i put, i cropped it out a little bit to like give a little plug um, but we need one of us doing something iconic. Yes. We need to fix Checklist that. Checklist item for next time. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Well, we've got plans. Um, and I'm very excited. And uh, soon we'll share those plans with everybody else. Yes. If, anybody, yes. if you've made it this far in watching, thank you for watching. Congrats to you, <laughs> for real. An hour and 30, almost five minutes. Yes. If you count the Elvis puns, let us know. We'll probably have to rewatch it ourselves and figure out how many right. there were. If you count the Elvis puns, I will give you a prize. I'll give you same. something fun. Honestly, same. Yeah. We'll, we'll mail you a, a fun little prize, maybe. 
I'm I'm down. We'll tag team and figure something out. Okay. Yeah, yeah. First person to send us the the count list because I actually want to know. I know. I we need to rewatch. I want to know. <laughs> I kind of made a few myself that I was proud of. So I want to know how many we made together. I might send you a gift anyway, because I'm so proud of how many I was like, oh my gosh, Mary's coming out of She came out to play I know. How did I think of so? It's literally your just your energy that like radiates. So I'm like, okay, I'm I'm getting the vibes. Let's fly, let's fly. Let's be friends. Let don't start with me. That song actually does make me cry. I love that song. We love that song. We'll blast that in the car sometime. Wink. What? No. Oh, no. No. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, okay. thank you again. I love you so much. And, love you um, too. Thank you for inviting me to be part of this. And yes. I hope you feel thank better. You. Thank you. You were a dream guest. One of my favorite <gasps> conversations that I've had ever in like the past five years of this account. And I'm, I'm, I'm grateful, girl. I love you. Love you too. All this right. was golden. Cool, well, Talk soon. Oh, oh, you got hearts. Yes! Yes! That, that was Elvis magic right there. Yes, because that did not happen any of the other times I did that in this whole thing. And I did okay. that a lot. While we're ahead. Right. Yeah. Okay. And on that note, sending love to Maria and everybody else. Bye. Talk to you guys later. Bye. Thank you.